Today's readings bring us to the conclusion of Job's journey, where we witness God's immense power and justice, the reconciliation of our lives to God through Christ, and the beauty of praise. These passages remind us of God's ultimate authority and the peace that comes from surrendering to His will. As we dive into these scriptures, let us open our hearts and invite the Holy Spirit to guide our understanding, drawing lessons that are relevant to our daily lives. Let us pray and invite the presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with open hearts, seeking your wisdom and understanding. We invite the Holy Spirit to guide us through these scriptures, revealing your truth and love. May the words we read today transform our hearts, strengthen our faith, and equip us to face the challenges of life with courage and trust in you. We thank you for your constant presence and for the gift of your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We start with the book of Job 40 verse 1 to 24. In Job 40, God speaks to Job reminding him of his supreme power and questioning Job's understanding. God describes the behemoth, a creature that symbolizes his might and creativity, challenging Job to recognize his own limitations in the face of divine majesty. Job 40 verses 1 to 24 in IV. Verse 1 to 2 reads, The Lord said to Job, Will the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? Let him who accuses God answer him. This chapter reminds us of the immense gap between our understanding and God's wisdom. When faced with the challenges and complexities of life, we must acknowledge our limitations and trust in God's perfect wisdom. In Job 41, God continues by describing Leviathan, a fearsome sea creature that no man can tame. Through this, God illustrates his unmatched power and authority over all creation. Job 41 verses 1 to 34 in Ivy. Can you pull in Leviathan with a fish hook or tie down its tongue with a rope? Can you put a cord through its nose or pierce its jaw with a hook? Verse 1 to 2. Leviathan is a sea serpent and also symbolizes the uncontrollable forces of nature that only God can command. This chapter challenges us to recognize God's unparalleled authority and reminds us that nothing is beyond his control. God's description of Leviathan is a powerful metaphor for his absolute dominion over creation. It serves as a reminder that no force in the universe can challenge God's authority and that he alone is worthy of our reverence and trust. In Job 42, Job humbles himself before God, repenting for his earlier complaints. God honors Job's repentance by restoring his fortunes, giving him twice as much as he had before and blessing him with a long and prosperous life. This chapter highlights the importance of humility and repentance. Job's story shows us that God is merciful and just, restoring and blessing those who turn to him with a sincere heart. Let us pray. Dear Lord, in times of confusion and trial, help us to remember your sovereignty. Remind us that your ways are higher than our ways and your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Give us the humility to accept that we may not always understand your plans, but we trust in your wisdom and love. Lord, we humbly come before you, acknowledging that your ways are beyond our understanding. Help us to trust in your wisdom, even when life doesn't make sense. May we find peace in knowing that you are in control and that your plans for us are good. Almighty God, we stand in awe of your power and authority over all creation. We recognize that nothing is too great for you to handle. Help us to surrender our fears and worries to you, knowing that you are in control. Strengthen our faith and remind us that no matter how fierce the storm, you are with us. In the name of Jesus, Father, you alone are sovereign over all creation. We acknowledge that there are forces in this world that we cannot control, but we find comfort in knowing that you are in control. Help us to rest in your power and to trust in your provision, even in the midst of life's storms. Gracious God, we thank you for your mercy and grace. Just as you restore Job, we ask that you restore our lives and bless us abundantly. Help us to walk humbly before you, seeking your forgiveness and trusting in your love. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. 
In of 2 Corinthians 5 verses 11 to 21, Paul speaks about the ministry of reconciliation. He emphasizes that through Christ, God has reconciled us to himself, and we are called to be ambassadors of this reconciliation, sharing the message of God's grace with the world. This passage reads, Since then, we know what it is to fear the Lord, we try to persuade others. What we are is plain to God, and I hope it is also plain to your conscience. We are not trying to commend ourselves to you again, but are giving you an opportunity to take pride in us, so that you can answer those who take pride in what is seen rather than in what is in the heart. If we are out of our mind, as some say, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Paul's message reminds us that as believers, we are called to live out the ministry of reconciliation, sharing the good news of God's love and forgiveness through Christ. It is a call to embrace our new identity in Christ and to be his ambassadors in the world. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for reconciling us to the Father through your sacrifice. Help us to live as new creations, carrying the message of reconciliation to those around us. May our lives reflect your love and grace, drawing others to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Psalm 45 is a royal wedding song that praises the king's majesty, celebrating his righteousness, and extolling the beauty and grace of the bride. It reads, My heart is stirred by a noble theme as I recite my verses for the king. My tongue is the pen of a skillful writer. You are the most excellent of men, and your lips have been anointed with grace, since God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword on your side, you mighty one. Clothe yourself with splendor and majesty. In your majesty ride forth victoriously in the cause of truth, humility, and justice. Let your right hand achieve awesome deeds. Let your sharp arrows pierce the hearts of the king's enemies. Let the nations fall beneath your feet. Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. All your robes are fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia. From palaces adorned with ivory, the music of the strings makes you glad. Daughters of kings are among your honored women. At your right hand is the royal bride in gold of Ophir. Listen, daughter, and pay careful attention. Forget your people and your father's house. Let the king be enthralled by your beauty. Honor him, for he is your lord. The city of Tyre will come with a gift. People of wealth will seek your favor. All glorious is the princess within her chamber. Her gown is interwoven with gold. In embroidered garments, she is led to the king. Her virgin companions follow her, those brought to be with her. Led in with joy and gladness, they enter the palace of the king. Your sons will take the place of your fathers. You will make them princes throughout the land. I will perpetuate your memory through all generations. Therefore the nations will praise you forever and ever. This psalm reflects the beauty of a righteous ruler and the joy of the bride. It serves as a prophetic image of Christ as the king and the church as his bride, celebrating the union of divine love. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beauty of your love and the joy that comes from being united with Christ. 
May we honor you with our lives, living in righteousness and celebrating your eternal reign. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Proverbs 22, verse 14. The mouth of an adulterous woman is a deep pit. A man who is under the Lord's wrath falls into it. This proverb warns against the seduction of sinful behavior, emphasizing that those who fall into such traps are ensnared by the Lord's judgment. This verse also reminds us of the dangers of falling into sin and the importance of staying close to God's path. It is a call to remain vigilant and seek His guidance in all things. Let us pray. Lord, keep us from falling into temptation and protect us from the snares of sin. Help us to walk in Your ways, guided by Your wisdom and grace. May we always seek to please You in our thoughts, words, and actions. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Today's readings have taken us on a journey through God's power, justice, and grace. From Job's encounter with the Almighty to Paul's call for reconciliation, we see the importance of humility, repentance, and living as new creations in Christ. We are reminded that no challenge is too great for God, no sin too deep for His forgiveness, and no life too lost for His restoration. As we face our own struggles, challenges, and tests of faith, let us hold on to these truths. God is in control, and His plans for us are perfect. He calls us to live in righteousness, to trust in His power, and to be ambassadors of His love in the world. Let us pray. Father, we thank You for the wisdom and lessons we have received today. We ask that You help us to apply these truths in our daily lives, strengthening our faith and guiding us in Your perfect will. We pray against every plan that goes against Your will for our lives and our families. May we walk in Your light, reflecting Your love and grace to those around us. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving, amen and amen. Thank you, child of God, for joining us today. We appreciate your continued support, and if you have not, we encourage you to subscribe to our channel for more enriching content. And if you have subscribed, liked, and shared, thank you. As we conclude today's session, remember that God's power is unmatched, His love is unwavering, and His plans for you are good. Stay rooted in His Word, trust in His promises, and walk in the victory that Christ has won for you. Until next time, may the peace of God be with you. Shalom.